A town's population has been growing linearly. In 2003, the population was 45,000, and the population has been growing by 1,700 people each year. Write an equation, P of T, for the population T years after 2003. All right. So I know usually it's like, oh, great, the information is great. And then once we get down to here, it's like, huh? What do they want us to do? So it's very important that you kind of create a little bit of a rich picture and take each piece uh, one by one. So first of all, it says the town's population is growing linearly. Well, if we know it's growing linearly, that means it's changing by the same amount every year. Right? That's what a linear line represents. If it's linear, that means the change to go from, let's say, this point to that point will then be the same to go from that, you know, that point to that point, proportionally speaking, okay? So now, I'm not really sure if that helped, but anyway, so <laughs> if it changes linearly, um, we know that the that an equation could be created that looks something like this, y is equal to mx plus b, right? Okay, so now in this problem, the y basically is going to be p of t. I'm just going to call it p, all right? Uh, maybe I'll substitute it in later. So P for population. So the population will equal then some slope value M times then some X value, right? Now what's the X? Well, they're ta telling us basically the population T years, okay? T years. So the X could be represented as T plus B, okay? So now I have, I basically just realized that my population is really my Y, and my t is really my x, right? If you had to, if you had to think of the graph again, the x value is the independent variable, right? The time that passes is independent. The dependent variable will then be the population. Okay. Um, all right. Well, does the population truly depend on time, or does it depend on other socioeconomic factors? Right. We can get into a little bit of that, but I'll spare you the details. So, um, so now what we need to do is we now. Uh, need to basically, uh, I'm not sure actually, so that's why I'm, <laughs> that's why I'm stumbling. No, I'm kidding. Actually, I'm not kidding. So, <laughs> sorry guys, I'm getting a little loony. This is my, I think my, I don't know, 20th problem today. So, uh, bear with me on this one. All right, uh, let's get down to business. So it says in 2003, the population was 45,000. Okay, so why don't you, why don't we make a little timeline? So 2003, at 2003, the population was 45,000, right? This represents T, this represents the population. Okay, great. And then it says the population has been growing 1,700 people per year, right? So the population here is going to be growing by 1,700, right? So the next year in 2004, the population would be, let's say, for example, it would be 4,607, uh, excuse me, 46,700, all right? Now, wait a minute. Just from knowing this information, don't we? Can't we find the slope? And sure, you might say, "Oh, great! I got two points, right? I can find the slope." Well, yes, no, we definitely can, right? This looks like a seven. I'm going to make that should be a four. Uh, we definitely can, but it's even easier than that, right? Guess what they this represents here: seventeen hundred people each year. The population is growing by seventeen hundred people each year. That is the rate of change, my friend, right? So this right here, growing by seventeen hundred people each year. That is the slope. That is M. So now I know what M is, right? Okay, great. So now I know what M is. So I can now write that the population will be equal to 1,700 times the time in years, right? Plus then B, okay? Plus B. Now you might say, well, okay, what does time represent? Does time represent, like, would I plug in 2003 or would I plug in 1? Well, technically, it's a great question, by the way. So technically speaking, the time here should be uh, in terms of years after 2003, okay? Because that's also what they're telling me here, right? So the T that you're going to plug in here should be time after 2003. So for example, if it were 2004, you'd plug in 1. If it were 2005, you'd plug in 2, etc. All right. So now we have the slope. Now the next thing is to figure out, well, what's the y-intercept? Now you have to remember this. The y-intercept we can think of as the initial value. Initial value. Okay? So we started, I mean, they want us to find an equation t years after 2003. So what year are we starting this equation at? We're starting it at 2003. So what's the population of 2003? 45,000. So that's the b-value. Now watch. 1700 times t 
plus than 4,500. Now notice, if this is the equation, and this is, by the way, if I want to find the population in 2004, that's one year after, right, 2003. So if you plug in one here, it's 1,700 times one, which is simply 1,700, and then add to that 45,000. Uh, so there's got to be another zero there. Sorry about that. And now what would we get? We would get 46,700, exactly what we would have expected. All right, guys, so this is the formula. And you can plug in your little P of T. Okay, good. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Please remember to help us out. We got so many more videos. Check out the other videos, all right? The more, the more you learn how to approach these problems, the better you're going to do in the class. All right, so we got a whole bunch of stuff out there for you. All right, so feel free. Take care.